Well, hi everyone, and welcome back to Waterhouse Ford. As you can see, we've got the dynamo or the generator up on the bench right now. Um, and this video is going to be about basically testing the dynamo and then uh, stripping it because, as you can see, it's in desperate need of a cleanup. Um, so, but I want to test it first to make sure, well, basically to check whether it's working as expected. Um, and I'm going to run through how to do that. Um, this is the, let's call it the quick way of testing uh, that I'm going to use. Obviously, if we run into problems, then we may well employ the, the more formal method uh, defined by Lucas. Uh, it is a Lucas generator, um, and as you can see, it's the vented type. So it has the holes in the front, uh, sorry, in the back, and also in the front, which basically rates it at 22 amps instead of 11. Anyway, uh, let's get into it and I'll talk a little bit about uh, what I'm doing, show you what I'm doing and hopefully uh, this thing is actually working as expected. Okay, as you can see, I've now got it in the vase. Well, not in the vase, I've just got it resting on top of the vase. I've opened the vase to make a bit of a cradle for it so that it's reasonably firm. You know, it's not, um, not going to go away, go anywhere in a hurry. Now, the very first thing we want to do is check the bearings and make sure that there's no, first of all, that it's not stiff to spin, uh, i.e. that there's no, you know, that the bearings are not, um, or bushes are not seized. Um, the second thing is basically that it does spin. That noise you can hear is the brushes running against the commutator. And basically that's the only drag you're expecting to experience when you spin this. You also want to just double check there's no untoward movement in the shaft or in the armature, which there doesn't seem to be. So I'm happy with that. Now, over here we've got two electrical connections. You can see they're a bit dirty and I might give those a little bit of a tidy up. Just with a brass brush. Okay. Okay, now as you can see one is larger than the other. The larger one is your is basically your power. So this is where the power when the generator is generating power, that's the essentially the, the output. Now I refrain from saying positive because it obviously depends on how your tractor has been wi wired and indeed how this generator has been set up. And we'll talk a little bit about that at some point. The little one is basically the connector for what they call the field coils. Now, so inside the generator, on the outside, we've got uh, large field coils or coils, which are creating a electro, uh, elect, uh, sorry, magnetic field, electromagnetic field. And in the center, the armature is spinning and turning within that field. So this one is effectively connected to one of your brushes. This one is connected to the, coil, the field coils and the common between both of them is basically the casing. So the casing is ground or it's, it's better referred to as common because as again, again, as I say, depends on how your tractor has been wired. Now the basic principle of this is, and it, most of you will know, generators only will charge the battery when they get up to a certain speed um, and that's because the, the generator itself powers the field coils. So actually when you follow your wiring back to your control box, you'll find that the power is also connected to the field coil. Um, and what that's doing effectively is powering or putting power into the field coils, which is generating electromagnetic um, or the electromagnetic field. And when the speed is high enough for that electromagnetic field to generate the 12 volts that you need or higher to charge your battery, then your control box kicks in and you start, um, well, it will then start charging your battery. But that power is coming out of this terminal here all the time. And the way that the control box basically regulates the, the power is essentially by switching the field coils on and off, on and off, on and off, 
uh, to either charge a battery or not, as the case may be. So, anyways, um, now in terms of testing, what we want to do is we're going to connect a multimeter on volts, obviously uh, DC volts, and we're going to connect uh, one to the power and one to the field coil. Um, no, sorry, one to the power and one to earth or ground. And we're going to turn the generator as we're going to use a drill to turn the generator. Normally, you do this on your tractor, obviously. And uh, what we want to do at a slowish rotation, we want to see between two and four volts coming out of the power. When we then connect these two together, still on the, with a voltmeter connected, and we start spinning this higher, we should, or spinning a little bit faster, we should see the voltage increasing. We don't want to go much above sort of 18, maybe 20 volts, because um, you obviously don't want to burn anything out. But um, yeah, not designed to run above sort of 18 to 20 volts. Anyway. But we don't need to go that high. As long as we see a voltage higher than sort of 5 volts, and again, I'm not really sure how fast we're going to be able to spin this thing using the, um, using the drill. should be fast enough, but let's just see. Um, if we get a, an increase in voltage, both when we connect the field coil and as we increase the speed of the of the generator, then we sh then we know that this generator is put is providing power. Um, now, obviously, the whether it'll charge the battery also now depends on the state of the control box, and that'll be obviously a separate video. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's the test we're going to do. I'm going to get that set up, um, and then we'll come back. Okay, now just quickly, you can see I've got my positive lead on the power terminal and I've got my negative just touching basically on the body of the generator. I just wanted to show you that because I'm now going to bring you over to the other side uh, so you can see the screen of the multimeter. Okay, I think hopefully you can now see the um, screen of the multimeter here. And you can see what I'm going to be doing um, over there. Now I'm working around the camera, so I hope that uh, what well, I'm going to try to not knock it. But um, it's worth mentioning as well. The we know that the, the the engine turns this way, which is essentially clockwise. So we want to keep turning, or basically turn it the same way um, when we're when we're doing the test. Now it's let's see what we get. So we're going to go with a slow tick over. Okay, so we're getting about 0.2. So you can see that it increases as you increase the speed. Okay, so it's quite low, but what we need to realize, of course, is that at the moment, the field, so this generator has been sitting under the workbench for at least three years while the tractor has been with us, and goodness only knows how many years prior to that um, before we bought it. So the field coils will have lost some of the sort of residual magnetism. Uh, which is what we're relying on at the moment because we're not powering the field coils. So, yeah, I'm, I suppose I'm not surprised that that voltage is quite low, but what is very encouraging is that it increases with speed. So, what we now want to do is join the uh, uh, power to the field coil terminal on the generator. So I'm going to do that quickly and then we'll come back. Okay, you can't uh, actually see it. I will take you around later. You can just see this green wire um, that I've got here now um, and that is connecting the power to the field winding. So now I'm hoping as we power this we should see a, an increase in voltage and it should eventually stabilize.
Okay, so definitely got a problem here. Um, that is doing the opposite to what I was expecting. Basically, the um, the field coils are not being powered up. In fact, they are they're actually seemingly opposing the um, the generation of power. So let's make sure I'm not losing it. I'm just going to disconnect that again. Make sure. Just spin it up again and see what we're getting. Yeah, as you can see straight away, you've got a much higher voltage. Now, again, maybe what I need to do is just flash the um, the field coils, which is basically where you connect a, a battery to the um, field coil just temporarily, just to essentially power them up, but also to decide whether you want positive or negative. Um, um, ground essentially. I don't know actually, I'm assuming this tractor was negative ground but I don't actually know that so I'm going to I'm going to get a little battery, um, a little 12 volt battery and I'm going to flash it quickly and let's see what happens. Okay you can see here now I've just got a small 12 volt battery, this is just the um, battery out of Oscar's quad bike and um, Oh, this cable's not very long. I'm not going to get there, am I? But uh, anyway, um, so yeah, the idea is to uh, obviously just so we've got the negative connected to the the base of the generator, and we're just going to use the positive just to flash the um, on the field coil. We're just going to give that a temp a little bit of temporary power just to um, essentially make sure that we've got it the right way around and as I say I'm doing this I'm assuming a negative earth okay I've just got the cable from the multimeter now the yeah, the positive and um, connected to the battery on the positive so on the positive terminal and basically I'm just going to just for a second or two I'm just going to power the field coils and that's enough in fact, it's probably too long, uh, as in more than required. But um, okay, so now let's try our test again. Okay, so now let's spin it up and see. First of all, um, I've just got the multimeter connected to the power line, power terminal. I've not yet connected the field coil. I just want to see what we've got um, initially. Okay, so we can see exactly the same, point 0.2, heading up to point 0.3 at a pretty much a tick over. Right, let's connect the field coil now. Okay, field coil is connected. Let's see if we get any different results. No, same result, 0 0.03. Even at maximum speed, I'm only getting 0 0.3. And I don't think that that uh, generator was designed to run at that sort of speed. I'll just see what speed is this. This is a looks like four th about four thousand revs per minute, which is um, obviously much more than a tractor is designed to run. Engine is designed to run it, but um, yeah, as you can see, we're still only getting 0 0.3 of a volt, um, which is uh, definitely not enough. So it seems that we've got some sort of problem with this generator. We're going to need to investigate what exactly. I think the um, the next job that we're going to do will basically strip the generator, um, check out all the different components, see if we can see anything obvious. We'll also test each of the components. So there are tests that we can do on the armature, tests that we can do on the field coils, etc. So we'll run through that. But first job really is to get this thing stripped down. 
Okay, the very first thing we want to do is uh, remove the pulley. Now, as you can see, the pulley is connected or is held in with a nut. And uh, the quickest way or easiest way to remove that will be obviously again with the impact driver. Now, we'll see if the impact will do it on its own, otherwise, we might have to find a way of holding that pulley. There we go. Okay, so that's the nut out, and there should be a little washer in there, a little flat washer. Oh, it's a spring washer, actually. Okay, cool. Um, now, this will probably... Okay, there we go. It just pops off. I was expecting to need to um, put a puller on that, but yeah, luckily that came straight off. Now, we've got a little key in there, so we'll try and pull that out. Trying not to get in front of the camera, but it's um, not easy. There we go. Okay. So we'll put all that somewhere to safe. Okay, next thing is to turn this around and you'll see that we have two large flat um, head screw, screws essentially. What we need to do is pull those out. You can see that that one is quite badly, that's been mangled at some point so we will have to be quite careful with that one. Now what you want to do is make sure that you've got a really good quality screwdriver. Um, let's do this one first, I think. And, um, you know, that's not going to slip out and it's not going to damage that head anymore. Make sure that the slot is clear so you're getting maximum grip on that and that one started to come and then stopped but that'll be the spring washer probably oh this one's very tough oh well, this one's definitely going to be a problem oh maybe so i might need to put this into the vase or at least put the tongues down so that they stopping it from turning which they're not let's just open this a bit more okay, let's try there there we go Now you can uh, use an impact if, you, if you've got a very good quality bit for your impact, but um, I'm, especially given the state of this one, I'm not going to chance it. So that will have to be tidied up, um, hopefully you can see that, that head there is been mangled. Um, right, now let's try this bottom one, which is the better one, but um, it's very tight. There we go. Okay. All right, now this back plate should come off. Now you want to be very careful with putting this in the vase, especially these, the, the, the back and the front. They, the metal that these are made from is not very good quality metal, so you do want to be careful not to um, lever it too hard or tap it too hard. And you, don't, you definitely don't want to 
script in the bus because it will break very very easily there we go now when I take this off the brushes are going to jump out um, so we're going to try to get my... I'm going to try... No, missed it <laughs> Well, there you go, there's your brushes. Um, you can see that that brush is almost finished. Um, and I'm actually surprised that was even still making contact. Um, yeah, that is... So, first job is to replace the brushes. Definitely. Not sure why that's not going in further. It should actually, there we go, it should go in further like that. Now that could be half of the problem. Although we were seeing A voltage, so. Okay, right, so uh, we'll, move, we'll obviously come back to this, and basically what you would do, you remove these little nuts here, or these little bolts here and here that, that loosens the, um, the electrical cable the <coughs> brushes come out and these springs can come out they basically just lift up and then in here you've got a brass bush um, that we need to just double check although that felt pretty good bear in mind at the back here you've also got a hole for oil we'll talk about that later okay so that's the back now Having a quick look inside, we've got the, um, let me turn this so the camera can see it. So in here we've got, obviously you've got your commutator, and we'll see that better when we get the um, armature out, and then here you've got the terminal for the field coils, and that is connected to both field coils. There's your field coils, one here, one there, so you've got a north and a south, and uh, that's connected to both. And then somewhere, there will be the other side of the coils will be connected to the casing and we'll have to find where that is in a minute right now this armature should tap out but we want to be really careful right so there's a little looks like a fiber washer on the back there I'm going to catch that and Let's see if we can tap this out. The other way to go is basically to tap the front casing off. Again, being very careful because it is this rubbish metal. There it comes. Just coming. There it is. And we can pull that armature out now okay now what we can see is that was here that was quite tight in those field coils and this it looks like we've got some kind of corrosion or dirt in on the armature windings uh, on the armature um, poles the looking at the commutator you can see here this is obviously a collection of segments copper segments, we're going to get that tidied up and we'll measure all of those but also it looks like we've got some carbon build up in between them which can cause them to arc, can cause the um, voltage to arc between them so we'll get those cleaned up as well bearing feels good okay so now we've got basically just the field coils in there left in there and I know you can't see them very clearly, but this is them here, basically, there and there. So, to get the um, field coils out, you use a large star screwdriver, and you loosen that screw. There's one on that side and one on that side, and then those field coils will come out of the casing as well. Let's get a large star and see if we can get these out 
maybe not. I do have an impact uh, driver, so I, will, I might have to use that. Yep, no, that's not coming. Okay, so let's um, try this. I've never actually used this before. This will be the first time using it. Let me zoom out a bit. Yeah, so I've not used this one before, so hopefully it's going to do a good job. I want to make sure that this thing is well supported. We don't want that cracking or breaking. I don't know how hard you're supposed to hit this, so we'll just um, go easy to start with. It doesn't seem to be working. Yeah, so we've got a lot of there's actually a lot of paint in there. I'm going to put some penetrating oil on the inside and the outside. See if we can get that to listen. Okay, I've decided to go a slightly different route, and this is based on. So I've done some research um, and looking at the Lucas uh, website. There is a tool that um, they show, which uh, is used, or they recommend to use when removing these screws. But I don't have one of those. But essentially, what it does is it. It has two levers. One lever is basically pulling down and the other lever is turning. I'll see if I can find a picture of it and I'll put it in the video here. Now the point is, um, basically what that's doing is it's applying or it's allowing the operator to apply a huge amount of downward force as well as the turning force. And it got me thinking, why not just do this in the um, press because obviously with that I can apply a huge amount of downward force and then obviously a turning force so I thought I'd try it with the impact driver in the press the problem with that is when it goes down because I'm not holding the handle basically the handle turns but nevertheless with the spanner I think I'm going to be able to turn that bit and remove the screw. So let's get the press set up. And we want it to be as straight as possible obviously. We'll take it down so that there's pressure on the screwdriver, impact driver. And as it turns, it kind of moves, so you have to keep straightening it. And I think that that'll probably do. And then what I've got, I'll just put a spanner on this bit, because it's a hexagonal bit. Make sure that that's nice and tight. And apply some turning pressure. Okay, and that's not working. Alright, let's try that again. And there it goes. So that definitely works, look at that, and the screw just pops out.
Okay, now there's one more thing we need to do before we can take those field coils out. And I'll just make sure that these screws are still holding. Um, but basically you've got this electrical terminal here. And that is riveted to the body and of course it's connected, electrically connected to the field coil. So what we're going to do is remove that rivet, which is just there. You can just see it there. So I'm going to need to drill that out um, and then and then we can take the field coils out. I'm not going to film that. You basically just drill it and then uh, a little punch and just punch it through. But um, there we go. Okay, so that electrical terminal is now loose and we can remove the field coils. Now, people talk about making sure that when you put them back, you put the, the same one in the same place. I don't know how relevant that is. Um, I've seen mixed uh, opinion on the internet, so I will just play it safe and mark them anyway. So we remove that screw. And hopefully that will loosen. Oh, there is this insulator as well. Um, that's really important. I'll show you. Well, well, we'll discuss that when we're putting it all back together. But try to hold on to it. That you onto that. You may have to replace it, but um, just hold on to it anyway. I am just going to put that back in for a second. I want to see how best to mark these. before we go any further. So on your body here you've got this um, cutout here um, and that obviously is for the when the cover goes on so that it always goes back on the same way and that's the uh, essentially the front cover. Um, so I'll show you. <coughs> no, I like it. it must be the back cover. Yeah, here we go. So on this, um, on the back cover, you've got a little indentation here, and that goes in there. So you know that that basically always goes that way, <clears throat> and that just makes sure that everything lines up. Now, yeah. So I think if I mark that one. For now, I'm just going to use a paint pen. So I'm just going to mark the metal core and also the coil. So I know this is the one that goes where that indentation is. Now, I think You've got to be careful about all the wiring inside, so I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to rest that on the vase so that the vase is supporting the field coils. We'll remove these two screws and then lift the core off. Hopefully that'll work. Still, here we go. It's basically just like that. Now, you can see here there is this electrical joint between these two here, and that insulator that I showed you a second ago that basically sits in the um, on the inside of the core and just keeps that wire away from the body of the, the well essentially of the core so that this doesn't earth out onto the onto the body. Now we will disconnect that in a second but do you remember I was um, wondering where the earth connection is and it's basically in this connector as well so 
the one wire goes to this terminal, which is your field terminal on the outside of the generator, and the other one actually connects through that rivet to the body, and that's how you create your earth. Um, and so that rivet is actually really important, um, and you've got to make sure that you get a really good electrical connection when you put that back. So, this can looks like it's been soldered, as you'd expect. So I might need to heat that up to, um, to undo that. I don't want to cut them. Let me see if I can get the cores out, uh, the, um, the shoes. So there you go. That's one of them. And we can see how the binding, or the wrapping rather, is, uh, is damaged on here. That's, shall I say, relatively normal for something that's been in service for a number of years. But remember that the, in, the conductors themselves are insulated. Uh, so that's the shoe that goes, uh, that's, that I've marked and that goes against the, or towards that um, cutout on the body. So there we go. Uh, you know, as I was saying, this wrapping is, um, yeah, inevitably it does get damaged. Um, as you can see, this one is perished and it's um, not in good shape. Um, but the actual conductors inside, if I show you here, they are insulated themselves. So this isn't actually insulating, it's just protecting. So yeah, it looks like we're going to have to do the whole job on this, as in, I think we're going to have to rewrap these uh, these coils. We will test them to make sure that they are um, still, that you've, got a con that you've got continuity all the way through, and also that you've got a very similar uh, resistance between the two, once we've got everything disconnected. Um, and as long as you have, I don't know exactly how many ohms it'll be, but as long as they are similar, and you've got uh, continuity all the way through, which you would have if you're measuring resistance, then you know at least that your coils are fine um, and you can just re-wrap them and they'll be good for a, a good number of years again. So, yeah, next job really is to uh, disconnect all these wires and um, disconnect the two coils from each other electrically so that we can work with them and then what we'll do is we'll remove this wrapping. I'll have to buy some wrapping. I don't actually have any at the moment. Um, and we'll get we'll test them and then we'll get them rewrapped. So let's get started. I need to get my soldering iron warmed up. Okay, I've got my um, soldering iron heated now, or at least it's starting to get up to temperature. So we're just going to heat this joint. We've got to be careful not to overheat the wires because that's what damages the insulation. But um, obviously it does take a little bit of um, heat to melt the solder. Okay, it's starting, starting to loosen now. not a very powerful soldering iron, it's, uh, it's just an old mechanics one that was given to me. Struggling a bit to heat this up. It's quite a long joint um, and it's difficult to heat the whole thing. There we go. Okay. That's that one. Put the soldering iron out of the way to cool off. Right, now here, these look to be, uh, they might be crimps and solder actually looking at them. Right, I think we might need a slightly different approach here. So that tag is held on by this rivet in, onto this plastic holder. I think what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to try and pull the rivet out 
and um, maybe just leave that connected just like that okay so that's that now what I want so basically these are now separated what I want to do now is basically test them so we've got our tester we'll put it on to um, ohms and um, we'll just test this one quickly so if I put on that rivet So it looks like we've got two point six two point six ohms. That seems quite low to me. But let's test the other one. And again, remember what we're looking for really is just consistency. We don't, doesn't really, well, the actual measurement is what it is, but so those are both very, very similar 2.7, 2.6. And it, every now and again, it drops. It's sort of hovering between 2.6 and 2.8, and they're sort of both doing it. So I think. We're going to call that one 2.7 and the other one 2.6, but uh, at least we know that we've got continuity. That's the main thing. So what that means is that we don't have a short inside here. Um, that you know that that would have been if that happens, then you basically have to get these replaced. Um, in fact, at that point, you get just you go and buy yourself a new generator because it's just not economically viable these days to to rewire these things. Right, so that's basically it. So the next job on these, as I said, is to remove the wrapping uh, and basically replace it, which um, is uh, quite an interesting job to do. As you can see, it's um, very brittle and. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, look, I think that's probably it. Oh no, let's have a quick look at the armature. So, one thing I mentioned, obviously we've got a little bit of... Um, it looks like the... Uh, so there's an insulator, that the insulation uh, resin, basically, that they put inside here. And it looks like that has melted a little bit here in between or is it just maybe that's just how it is actually it seems inconsistent to me I'm, I'm accustomed to seeing it smooth like like that there and down here it seems to be sort of where you can see with evidence of where it's sort of bubbled um, and it is all the way around but I'm going to assume that that's okay. Right, now, obviously, and that all needs cleaning up. Now, to test the armature, what we're going to do is uh, just pop that in the vase gently, just to hold it. And get our tester back. Now, what we want to... I'm going to try continuity first. So continuity is where if I touch these together I get an audible signal from the meter. Now what you do, these segments on the armature, if you measure across 180 degrees you should get continuity. 
and we don't seem to be getting it. Also, it probably would help to clean this armature up a little bit. Um, so one of the things I wanted to sh also talk about was, let me turn this over again. So in between these segments, you get a little bit of carbon buildup. It's quite normal, but whilst you're here, you might as well clean it out. Um, obviously, that's the debris from the brushes. And what you can, and what I will do, is you can get some emery, emery paper and just very, very lightly polish this armature so that it's um, nice and shiny again. And that obviously just helps with um, conductivity. Although, to be honest, it very quickly gets goes black again with the um, when it's back in service. But look, whilst you're here, you might as well clean it up. Okay, let's try this again now with the um, the probes uh, on the meter that hopefully will give us a bit of con connection so there we go we see we've got continuity there move over one on each in each direction and we're back at the beginning so those are all fine the next thing you want to do is measure the the uh, resistance uh, across each coil so there we've got 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and so on and so on. And basically, again, you're looking for it to be consistent. And these are all lovely, exactly 0.2 every single one so far perfect so every single one of those is 0.2 ohms which is um, and again we're just looking for consistency the final thing well actually it was the first thing but the final thing that I'll mention the first thing you should check for is just do a visual inspection of the windings and what you're looking for is any obvious burn or scorch marks um, which I'm not seeing anything or any evidence of here. See, what you're looking for really, this golden color is um, ideal. You, every now and again you see a dark, a black color. That's just a resin that they've used, um, which have, you know has covered the, the uh, insulator. It's not, I mean, initially when you see it, you might think it's a scorch, but it's, uh, when, I, when you look closely, you can see it's just a, it's a spillage, basically, of the resin. Um, burn marks will be very very obvious it'll be very black very carbony um, and you know you'll you'll see it straight away looking at the front obviously we can't see inside this sort of central core but as much as we can see that all looks fun looking at this bearing we can see there's a little bit of play in that bearing which is not good so I think we are although this is running lovely I'm going to see if I can get if I can find the bearing uh, for this, and if I can, then we will uh, take that out. It's um, quite an intricate job to do. You you know you have to you use these. Um, you've got to pull on the main body here, not on the outside. You've got to get a puller that goes inside there that can pull it out. Uh, you can see there's a bit of a, a captive ring there that's holding it in. Um, but also when you're putting it back in, you have to get this distance from the end of the keyway to the top here that has to be exact um, otherwise things just won't go back together properly I mean I'm, part of me is wondering if that play is actually the bearing itself because actually that is spinning very well and I don't hear any noise Anyways, we'll get that cleaned up. I'll do some more uh, research and uh, see if I can find the uh, 
found that bearing. Um, but definitely we need new brushes and the thing needs a desperate cleaner. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at the the back case. Now, first thing is be really careful when you're working with this. This metal is super soft. It'll break on you before you can even blink, um, which is a, it's a real shame because actually you do need to um, manhandle it a little bit. But anyway, just be careful. First thing you'll notice, you've got rivets in the back here. We're not going to touch those. We're going to leave those just as they are. If you needed to, you can actually drill them out from the back here and you can you can replace them, but we don't need to do that. So we're not going to we're not going to mess with that. Now, the other thing is you've got a bush in the back here, and again, we will test that and see whether we need to replace it, but as I say, this generator was running super smooth and I'm hoping that we won't need to. The other obvious thing, of course, is these brushes. You can see you've got an electrical post here that goes into the brush. The brush moves backwards and forwards in that channel. And of course, it's held in with the spring. And that's basically it. So what we're going to do, we're going to remove these two uh, electrical posts so that we free up the brushes. We're going to remove the springs and then we're going to take the brushes out. We will need to replace these brushes. They're definitely... Uh, that one is worn much more than this one, it would seem. Yeah, maybe not. Actually, they're probably about equal. But you can see that one's not running quite as smoothly in the um, in the hold. In fact, it's been held up by the wire. And that is a problem. That ha That wire has not been properly installed. It should be over the top like that and what's happening is it's catching on that screw and then the wire is actually touching on uh, catching on this on this casing um, and that that will be causing a problem more mostly it's stopping the brush from actually uh, making proper contact with the commutator so uh, but we'll get that sorted right so I don't think I'm gonna have a spanner small enough for that but let me see what I can find so again very very gently in the vase you don't want to put this thing under any pressure at all okay so that looks to be a I think it's a quarter I was hoping I'd have a small socket that would fit there, but um, unfortunately in the small sizes I've only got metric sizes and none of them fitted. Okay, so there we go, that's that one off. I'm just actually going to put that screw back in there because that will go missing before you can blink. Okay. So you see the brush is now loose and you can actually, no, maybe not. Um, you could actually get it out if you tried hard enough, but we don't need to. What we're going to do is we should be able to lift this spring off of this post. Now the um, brush can come out. And we'll do the same on this side. And again, the brush can come out. Now, what we want to do is obviously clean inside there and get that run you know, nice and smooth so the brush can move in and out freely. Um, we want to get that all cleaned up because that's obviously make, needs to make a good electrical connection and um, we'll get these springs soaked in some rust preventer or rust uh, remover and um, get those tidied up as well. Okay and that's basically it on, on the back. It's as much as we want to do for now other than cleaning. Look, that's it for this video. Um, obviously, we now need to do the necessary research and do um, get, you know, get some get some parts ordered. 
uh, the core now can be you know properly cleaned there's nothing else in here it's uh, now just a, a, a metal core uh, one thing I wanted to mention, people, again, on the internet, you see a lot of talk about when you're trying to remove these screws, you know, that you've got to be careful not to deform this shape. The, the truth is that this thing is, I mean, it's been, you can see there's a seam here, right? Um, this thing has been formed in a press. It was, what, it was a flat piece of metal. It's been formed to a perfect circle in a massive press. And as we all know, the, the strength of a round object is, is, is incredible. And I don't think that I could apply enough force to this casing to actually deform it. I think, that that would, I think it's you know, literally humanly impossible. You would need to have a massive press, you know, something in the order of hundreds of tons of power to be able to deform this. So um, obviously use, you know, be sensible um, when you when you're working with it, but don't be afraid to put pressure on this on this thing. It uh, and to give it a smack and do whatever you need to do to get those to get those screws out. Right, I think that's it. As I said, I think that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, sorry, it's been uh, on a, a rambling on a little bit, but um, I think this is one area that not enough people do these days. Um, I think, you know, it's so easy to just go and buy a new generator. Um, and in some ways, it's, to me, it's a little bit of a shame. So I, I, I prefer to restore it and, you know, to try to get it back into service if I can, rather than just replacing it. So, um, yeah, if you're interested, hopefully you found this, inter this video interesting and uh, if you can follow along. It'll be a number of weeks before we get back to this, I'm afraid. Uh, we've got other jobs that we need to do and more importantly, I think it's going to take a while for me to get this ready to reassemble. But um, just quickly run through that. A lot of cleaning. This will be completely uh, degreased uh, and then probably re repainted. Um, and uh, perhaps contentiously, I'm going to be painting it black and not grey. I know that that's not the, the standard, um, but to me... It looks better if the starter motor and the alternator are actually painted black and the coil is the other one. Um, so I'm going to be painting them black, a nice shiny high temperature black gloss and um, yeah that's what I choose to do. I know it's not standard and there'll be the purists out there who will not be happy about it but look it's my tractor and uh, this is how I'm going, this is how I'm choosing to do it so um, yeah. I think it looks pretty smart and um, I think there's just too much grey otherwise. Anyway, listen everybody, I hope you all have a great week uh, and we will see you on the next video. Cheers for now.